cool evening here in Pretoria, South Africa. Today I'm going to be talking about a cryptocurrency that I've never really analyzed or at least given any quick analysis about. And that cryptocurrency is Cardano. Now, some of you may know the history, so I'm not going to be, I'm not really going to go into the history of this particular cryptocurrency, it's just the analysis, but as you well know, the founder of Cardano, uh, Mr. Charles Hoskinson, was also a co-founder with Ethereum, with um, in Ethereum with um, Vitalik Buterin and others. Anyway, as usual, I start with the weekly chart. And uh, as you well know, for those of you who followed me or at least watched some of my work, you would know that I always um, start off with the Ichimoku charts. And I always start off with the weekly charts because the weekly charts actually sets the tone for whatever instrument you're trading. And in this case, we are looking at a bu rather bullish, a very bullish um, Cardano in this week. Shiku span here, as you can see, is running free. Tenkan Sen above the Kinjin Sen. All indicators here are above the cloud. And um, because of that, this is definitely bullish. The cloud itself is at a certain angle with some flatness here, which means that the price may be actually attracted to the circle span B, and uh, which is at about $1.18 and to $1.36. So I won't be surprised that the trading range, possibly up to the end of the year, according to this, will be around between one eighteen and one thirty six. Anyway, let's switch over to the day daily chart. And here and this is definitely bearish. As you can see, price action beneath the cloud. Kinju Sen above the Tenken Sen. And as you can see here, the Chiku here may get caught up within the price action. Now, when the Chiku span gets caught up within the price action, what tends to happen is that it tends to um, stop the advancing of the advancing or falling of the of the price action, depending on where it is. So, if for instance, if the Chiku span was above the price action, coming down and get stocks within the price action, then you typically find that the price of that particular instrument does not fall. It just kind of either trades sideways or not go anywhere at all. The same here. As you can see the Chiku here, if it gets stuck within the price action, you will typically find that this price action here does not rise. It kind of trades sideways like we're seeing right now. The sideways trade is also confirmed with the circle span B here looking extremely flat. Now, on the J chart, what are we looking at 26 days from, from now? We're looking at, which is the 27th of July. And we're looking at the price action of about one dollar thirty-five to one dollar seventy-one. And as I've always told you, whenever you see any of the cloud parts flat, you typically find that the price action is attracted to that, and it also acts as a point of resistance. So do not be surprised that the price doesn't go above one seventy-one. But again, no one can really know what the market is doing. Next, let's look at the four hour chart, which is the bridge between the long term traders and the swing traders. And here you can see this is definitely bullish. Price action above the cloud. Tenkan and Kinjin above the cloud, as well as Chiku. The Chiku is just about free here. May get caught up within the price action. Um, a bit of bearishness here, just slight bearishness because you can see that the Kinju Sen is still above the Tenkan Sen. So one must look at this with caution if you're trying to trade that, if, uh, specifically if you're trying to trade uh, the price movement over any of these indicators. You really must be careful. Again, let's look at this possible prices uh, on 7th of July. We're, lo we're looking at with something between $1.30 and $1.34. Now, remember, 
that these are just estimations. Um, no one can forecast the uh, the future. You, you really don't know what the future is going to you know is going to bring. So we're just using this as kind of indications as to what may happen. Okay. Let's go back to the weekly. And let's take the Chico out. And let's put... Uh oh, I think I've put the wrong... Let me get the right... Let me get the bull indicator. Okay. Double back and support indicator. There's a very simple indicator that um, I put together. And as you well know, again, those of you who followed me over the years, you will know that I always look at the 21 weekly exponential moving average, the 21 weekly EMA. And as you can see here, let's expand that, let's, let's get a look. As you can see here, <coughs> excuse me, one can see that uh, the 21 weekly EMA is below the 20 weekly SMA. Now, I've said this before and I've said it again. If anything is trading, if any instrument is trading below the 21 weekly EMA, then you can be damn sure that you're looking at something bullish, a bigger pattern, something bearish going on. And so you really have to sort of uh, put your antennas up and, you know, study and look at, you know, watch your price action very carefully based on what you've decided to trade or how you've decided to trade it, should I say. Another thing that you would observe, observe that this, as you can see, this um, purple line, this is the 21 weekly EMA. It is above the 21, it's above the 20 weekly SMA. When the 21 weekly EMA is above the 20 weekly SMA, then definitely you have got a sort of, you've got a bearish you're definitely damn sure that the price is going to be rising. It's going to be going up. I didn't say, did I say bearish? I beg your pardon. Bullish. Once the 21 weekly EMA is above the 20 weekly SMA, then you are definitely sure to have something bullish going on. That means that your price is rising as you can see here. But when you see the 20 weekly SMA go above the 21 weekly EMA, then you start getting a bearish tidings. And it's not so clear here as much as it could be. But if you look at it closely, if you go through the whole chart, okay, something like this bit here, you will find, see, as you go, yeah. As you go through it, you will see that that is the case. I mean, it's much more, it's clearer when you look at instruments like Bitcoin and Ethereum. You tend to see it in a much clearer manner. Now, do not expect, as I've said before, do not expect altcoins to become bullish. Why? Because Bitcoin, let's have a look at Bitcoin here. Excuse me. Bitcoin is still under the 21 weekly EMA as well as the 20 weekly SMA, as you can see here. And as long as Bitcoin remains here, do not expect the altcoins to do anything different because as you can see you've got the price range between 29,891 and about 41,386 you should expect this for a few more months i don't don't expect yeah you know don't, don't, crack, don't crack out the champagne yet i start saying oh things are getting you know things are improving everything don't crack out the champagne don't sign up for those um blockchainology interviews <laughs> not that blockchainology is not that they're, not that they're um, you know, interviewing anyone, but don't start cracking those, um, those bottles of champagne yet. However, when the price action goes above the 21 weekly and the 20 weekly SMA, you can be damn sure that things are going to begin to happen within the, um, within the altcoin area, uh, market. Now, no one can tell you. If anybody says that they know when it's going to happen, uh, that person is just full of it. I would always suggest to you that do not believe, don't believe the hype. Be very careful. Because one never knows how, how these things uh, play out. 
But overall, um, ADA has done slightly better than um, Bitcoin. Now, one of the one of the reasons, or may be the reason, is um, a report we had today. And it says here, Grayscale adds Cardano to its cryptocurrency investment fund. Now, this is bound to, to bring some kind of enthusiastic reaction. You wouldn't know it, however, when you looked at the price, although you can see there's a bit of indecisiveness here. Look at that spinning top there. So, it says here, the fifth most valuable crypto by market cap will make up 4.26% of the digital large cap fund. So it says here, crypto investment firm Grayscale today added Cardano to its digital large cap fund. The New York City based company announced that the altcoin would make up 4.26% of the fund. This is bound to bring about some joy to some people and it's bound to reflect in the price, which we have seen. And you've seen the, um, if you, again you go back and you look and you can see that price there, you can see it's all green now. Although there's just a spinning top, it's slight very slight indecisiveness, but nevertheless, the price has gone up. And they're saying here, and it says, uh, we're excited to welcome Cardano to our digital large fund, cap fund portfolio as we work to ensure that our diversified fund can safely hold assets that collectively comprise 70% of the entire digital asset market, Edward McGee, Vice President of Finance at Grayscale said in a statement. This tells you how serious Grayscale is taking the whole Cardano stuff. Now, Cardano still has a long way to go. And they've been putting things to, you know, together painfully, slowly. I mean, we're still waiting for the smart contracts to come out. We're still waiting for access, easier access to NFTs on the Cardano platform. There's still a lot to come. And I'm sure that the, that team is working very hard towards that. So it says here, Cardano is a blockchain, excuse me, a blockchain platform that competes with the likes of Ethereum. Cardano's founder, Charles Hoskinson, also co-founded the Ethereum network, which I've said earlier. The project calls itself the third generation cryptocurrency. And like Ethereum, aims to be a platform on which people can create smart contracts. So it's going to be interesting to see how um, things turn out before the end of the year. It says here, Cardano's native, ADA, Cardano's native cryptocurrency has climbed up the ranks within the last year. It's now the fifth most valuable crypto asset around with a market cap of $43 million. And of course, we've seen the price. I think the current price is about $1.37. Um, like I've said, we should not expect much of a dramatic price change. I think it's going to be between 130 and 171, something like that, like I said earlier. I stand to be corrected, please, if you remember, you know, what I said earlier about that. But that's what we should expect. Okay. And by the way, um, Grayscale is a popular investment vehicle that holds cryptocurrencies and allows investors to have a stake in them without actually holding them by buying shares that represent the digital assets. Grayscale, ladies and gentlemen, is um, run by a man called Michael Saylor. I'm sure you've seen him. The man who also, um, he's the man that asked um, Elon Musk to have a discussion, what they call the B-word discussion. That they're going to be having, so I think you should look out for that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's enough for me for one day. Um, and as always, keep your eyes and ears open and your trading sharp. Have a good one. Bye.